Henrik, how has life as a manager been so far? It's good, it's been okay. I think um, it's a little bit different, but um, I enjoy it. Yeah, has it been like you expected? Has it been more enjoyable? Uh, more enjoyable, yes, I think. Uh, I knew it would be a lot of work, but I knew that from the beginning, so that didn't really surprise me. But I enjoy it. I like working with people and uh, trying to to get my ideas across to the players. Yeah, you're here for one season at Lance Krona. What are your plans beyond that? Because this is a whole new venture for you. Yeah, that's why I don't have any plans really. I'm just trying to take one thing at a time. Uh, trying to learn. Um, yeah, it's, it's a little bit different being a player a manager. So I try to learn the trade a little bit here and how to interact with the players and which level you should put it on and things like that. So. I'm enjoying it and I had, uh, as you said, I signed one year contract and um, yeah, I know that if they don't like me they can put me away and if I don't like them I can do whatever I want. So that's a, that's a good thing to have but I don't really don't have any plans beyond this because this is the thing that is most important for me now. Any particular reason why Lance Krona Boys? Uh, no, I mean... I made clear when, when I stopped playing football that I was interested in becoming a, a coach manager. And um, But Lars Krona came in and asked if I was interested in, in, uh, in, in the team to take them on. And I said, when I've been thinking a little bit, I, was, I said, yeah, why not? I'll have to give it a chance. I mean, it's a great opportunity. It's a, it's a club with a great tr tradition. Um, and uh, yeah, it has enormous potential. You've played under some, some great managers. Was it always your intention to become a manager or was it the influence of some of them that sparked the idea? I used to say to, to my wife before, I never become a manager because I mean it's a lot of work. I mean as a player you're there for two hours and then as a coach you're there from early morning till, till late night. And then you it's sleep with it? Yeah, no, because you have to plan the training sessions and everything and you have to take other things into consideration. So, But I said when, 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 when I reached 30 plus I said, well, this is, this is my education. I've been playing football for, for such a long time, it would be a waste to just to throw it away. But then you never know, I mean, just because you've been a decent footballer, it doesn't mean that you're going to be, be a decent coach. You have to be able to verbally and, and practically put it across to the players the way you think, the way you want it. And that's, that's what I'm going to find out now, if, if I can do that or not. Is your aim to take elements of all the great managers that you've worked under and become your own manager? Yeah, of course, I think I have to take the best out of every, every manager that I had. Uh, even the bad ones, because there's always something good in everybody. Um, so of course, that's my intention t to look across all the, all the 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 managers that I had in the past, but also the the players that I played with, uh, their influence, the way the way I want the, the team to play. So I mean, it's a little bit from from everywhere really, and uh, I try to to mix it together and, and, and get something out of it. You worked under Wim Janssen and Martin O'Neill at Celtic and then Sir Alex Ferguson. What will you take from those particular characters? Then you have Frank Reichert as well in Barcelona. Barcelona. So I mean, I would take everything. I mean, all the good things. I mean, passion. I mean, both O'Neill and, and, and Sir, Sir Alex is, is known for the passion for the game. Uh, uh, Reichert uh, for, for maybe for, for his, uh, yeah, how do you say it? Uh, Tactically, uh, it was very, very shrewd, uh, but both the others as well, obviously. But uh, I would take a little bit from Vim as well, and uh, and uh, and uh, Vengloss I had as well. So I would take a little bit of everybody and then try to make it my own. I don't try to to be become another Sir Alex Ferguson or another Martin O'Neill or another Frank Reich. I try to be to be Henry Larsson, the coach, in 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 my way and. And I will see it's a, it's a huge mountain to climb, and, but I'm looking forward to it. Uh, I really, really enjoy it. I wake up every morning with a big grin on my face. And, and as long as you feel that, I think that you are, you're doing the right thing, you're doing the thing that you really want to do, and I think that's very important. When you were abroad um, playing, you always said you wanted to come back to Sweden, but you brought your family up abroad. Are they settled now? In Sweden? They're settled now. I mean, uh, it's four years we've been back home, really, and uh, they're, they're quite settled. Uh, I mean, 
Jordan losing his Scottish accent. Yeah, he lost that one as soon as we left for Barcelona because we was a, a, the English school there, and I mean he spoke spoke a little bit more like an English guy. But now this is more Americanized, and unfortunately because he was very, very, very cool when he had the the, the Glasgow accent. Really, having been such a successful player, does that then put pressure on you to be? equally as successful as a manager? That's you guys again who puts the pressure on me. I mean, I'm used to living under pressure. I mean, I played for so many years for such great clubs that, that you had to perform week in, week out. Uh, and yeah, that's the media again then putting pressure on you to, to continue performing. And it's going to be the same now when, you're, when I'm a coach. Uh, they're going to maybe expect me to do a little bit more than everybody else. Uh, but it has to be realistic, otherwise I can never live up to it. So I have my own expectations uh, as a player, and I, had, and I have my own expectations as a coach. And that's for first, first and foremost what I'm going to try to live up to, uh, and doing as good as I can for Lance Krona because that's the most important thing. Most managers will say that it comes second to playing. Do you miss playing at the highest level? Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> I really don't. I really don't. I think it was just uh, I was in overtime there because I really didn't enjoy it in the end, and I got a bad injury just before I stopped as well. So um, I don't miss it at all. I mean, especially now when you look outside here in Sweden, we don't start the league until till April, 10th of April we start, and we now what is it, 26th of of February is so much snow out there and artificial pitch I don't really miss that <laughs> do you not miss the atmosphere I mean looking at looking at I Celtic at the moment I, I, I will maybe do in, in the future when, when I go maybe, maybe when we start playing games proper games here that I will miss you know the, the match day situations and probably will do but I mean that's life you can't continue doing uh, everything you want as for as long as you want I mean there's a time to everything and uh, I hope that and I know that, uh, that coaching will never be the same as, as playing because plenty of people told me that. So, I mean, that's not a surprise. So, what I have to do is, is to make the best out of the situation. And uh, that's what I'm doing now. I mean, enjoying it. Uh, as I said before, when I wake up, I have a smile on my face. And what more can you ask for? You understand the pressure of playing for one of the old firm clubs. When you, when you know now that, that obviously Celtic are in a bit of a dogfight for the league, they're a few points behind Rangers, do you not envy the players in that battle that they're in? No, <laughs> not really. I mean, it's a lot of pressure being uh, under that, as you say. I mean, and I really don't miss that pressure. I've been, I've gone through all that. Um, so, I mean, when people talk about pressure here in Sweden, um, I, I kind of laugh a little bit inside because, I mean, you don't understand pressure until you've been living in Glasgow for seven years and playing there and, and always expected to, to win. Uh, second is never good enough. So, I mean... You're either top or bottom, aren't you? Exactly. So when people talk about pressure, I mean, uh, I, I really laugh about it because, I mean, I lived there for seven years, so, which was fantastic. What advice would you give to the players that are there at the moment fighting for that league title, especially the ones that have just come in? I mean, it's not for me to give any advice about yes, that. You've been no, there for years. Yeah, but I mean, I don't. I never liked it when other when other uh, ex players used to talk about it. So I will not start about it myself. I mean, the only thing I can say is, I mean, it's it's, it's a great club to play for, and it's uh, it's um, something they should really. Um, cherish because it's, it's not a lot of players that are allowed to play for Celtic. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of, there are a lot of, as I said, overseas players. Do you think that there's some concern with among Celtic fans that the Scottish element, the home.